So we need to discuss COPPER, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, and how it affects not only this channel, but other channels on YouTube. Now, I'm trying to approach this without going into panic stage, or overreacting, or running around with my head chopped off, or anything like that. But I'm going to be absolutely frank. It's been so limited. The information coming from YouTube and the FTA have been FTC, sorry, have been so limited. Nobody knows what's going on, and we can have a look at the. YouTube legal channels and try and get as much information as we can from them, but only they can give us limited insight. Advice would be the wrong word. And the YouTube channels themselves are panicking because they don't know how it affects them. They don't know how it affects the bigger channels. Nobody knows how it's going to affect the smaller channels. Um, but if, if anything out of this Nearly everybody, other than Google itself, has been a victim of Google's mismanagement of the situation. Or, I should be more blunt, blatant breaking of the law. Now, here's a little history of copper that I know of. It's a law that was set up in 1998, and it has good intentions. And intentions that I actually approve of. In fact, one of the things that I really despise about the internet and how it works, how Facebook works and how Google works and how other places like social platforms like it work, is the acquisition and selling of private information, be they children or be they adults. Unfortunately, and Google and Facebook know this, they are almost a necessary evil when it comes down to connecting to the wider world. Whether you're a private individual because you've moved like I did thousands of miles away from friends and family, or business. Because one of the best ways to connect with people through your business is through the internet. And unfortunately, Google is the biggest search engine out there. YouTube is the has literally the monopoly on social video interaction. And the same can be said of Facebook and Twitter. These are such immense giants that they have literally managed to get away with untold evil. And it surprises me, in fact, it, in fact no, it, it horrifies me that it has taken the FTC this long to actually pounce on one of the major giants. Now, as a result, Google came to an agreement with the FTC in which they had to pay $170 million in fines for collecting and selling children's private information to corporations. And Hasbro is complicit, Mattel is implicit, any toy company that has bought this information so that they could, could contribute to personalized ads targeted at children. I've, I've lost my sense, of, my, my, my sense of thought, but they're just as guilty of, of this. Now, this kind of harks back to me as a TV um, archivist who delves into children's shows, especially 80s TV shows, where TV shows were literally one long commercial. I, uh, one of the things I pointed out on the Transformers movie review that I did a few years ago was that it was nothing more than a 90-minute commercial that you paid to watch. And um, this concerned the FTC. This concerned parents because of the um, pressure they were getting from kids to buy certain toys, etc., etc., etc. Um, God love capitalism, I, I guess. So eventually, Saturday 
morning TV shows were targeted. And um, the FTC is largely one of the major reasons why there aren't any Saturday morning cartoon shows anymore that are toy related. Now, whether the cartoons that you actually watch now have toys afterwards, that, that's a completely different um, conversation to have. But um, when the FTC came out, they were not just worried about the, um, the uh, when Copper came out, they, they weren't just worried about the commercialism behind it and the pressure selling that they were putting on children. They were also concerned about who was getting a hold of this data, which to me is, is a very legitimate concern. Um, I, I, I cannot fault the principle behind the copper law. What I can fault is Google's handling of it. What I can fault are modern is modern day parenting <laughs> where literally everybody gives their kids an app to play with whilst they go into their living room and drink a bottle of wine just for a bit of peace. We live in an age where kids don't play outside anymore or climb trees. We live in an age where kids are reliant on the very technologies that we now take for granted. And as a result, it's created this crucible of, of chaos. Now, in principle, I have nothing against what copper is trying to achieve. I, I, I have nothing against what, what, what it's doing. What I, what I am concerned with is how Google has passed the buck onto an uneducated mass of people that have no idea what it is they're doing or who it is they're talking to. I have to go through my videos and literally decide what's for kids and what's not for kids. Now, let's, let, let's, let's make let's, let's a new glance about this. This is not about what kids are watching. This is, not, this is not about what kids are watching. This is about whether what you have created is specifically targeted towards kids so that that can, so that the kids watching these videos will get personalized ads. Now, I don't get paid on YouTube. I don't get any money from, 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 from YouTube. So financially, this doesn't affect me. This doesn't affect me at all. On an entertainment level, it affects me because I actually enjoy doing this. And there's literally no point in my contributing to a website where I want to entertain people of all ages that literally punishes its users for how it broke the law and the punishment it had. You can check out their, their video, i link in the crotch bar below. They have been so blatantly vague about what they expect us to do, everybody is in panic mode. And they've also sent out emails saying that if your channel is not commercially viable, it will be removed. They may even remove your email services. They, 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 they have said they will, they are perfectly within their rights to do that. Now, as a private company, they're perfectly within their rights to do that. But as a private company, I feel that they have taken no personal responsibility for the crime. And let's not um, mince our words here, the crime they have committed. Now, thankfully, the FTC have left um, an open comment session on regards as to how they're dealing with this. Now, I do believe that it would be more beneficial for the FTC to listen to what content creators have to say. Because to be honest with you, I don't think that Google or the staff at YouTube have any idea what goes into content creation. I really don't think that they understand and I really don't think that they care because if they do they could have contributed to the conversation 
Instead, they just pass the buck onto basically as nobodies who literally have no legal um, recourse. We, we don't know where to go to. Some of us can't afford the lawyers that Google are advising us to get. And the training that they said, that they agreed to the FTC that they would be giving us, they're not even providing. They've given us one video, <laughs> one email, telling us what to do, but they have not tell, told us what to look for or how to look for it. And largely, I can't blame Google for that because the FTC themselves have been extremely vague as to what they're looking for. Now, I do animated characters. Now, it's quite clearly that the subject matter that I'm dealing with is not targeted at children. That doesn't mean that it's not suitable for children. It's just not targeted for children. But because my character is animated, it could be misconstrued as targeted at children. I dread to think how the FTC would react to a review of a Rutsuki Doji or Wicked City or maybe Akira. And this is kind of what we're dealing with. The problem is, is that we content creators are educated in the subject matters that we present in our videos, probably more so than the people at the FTC who are trying to do their job and Google who really just want to make money out of what we do. I have no doubt in my mind that the staff at Google have no idea what the musical version of War of the Worlds is all about. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that the FTC can't tell the difference between Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Akira. I have no doubt in my mind that they, that, they, that, they, that, they have, that they don't know this. And parents really don't know what they're dealing with half the time. I remember when I worked in um, Silver Screen, and we in Britain have a certificate system for videos and VHSs and DVDs. And I, it was totally illegal for me to even consider selling an 18 certificate video to anybody under the age of 18. I couldn't even sell it to the parents with the intent of showing it to their kids. Otherwise, I could have got a fine of $5,000 and a five-year jail sentence. And my manager literally tried to get me to break the law, and I refused to do it. I'm sorry, but selling a DVD that is, that, that is deemed by the law not suitable for minors to a potential private shopper is not worth my going to jail for five years and a $5,000 fine. It really isn't. And YouTube isn't worth the risk of a $42,000 fine as a contributor, as a content creator. It, it really isn't. So as far as the future of this channel goes, I don't know. I don't know what the future of, the ch of this channel on YouTube, where it stands. As far as NJ4K is concerned, it's not dead. It, it's still going to continue in whatever form. Um, I'm already in communication with a potential website that does not track any in private information from either adults or children. They don't deal with personalized ads. Now, that might be inconvenient to the you know to the average viewer. It might be something that the average viewer might might desire. The thing about non-personalized ads is that you can't click away from them. It's that that that's that's sad, but that that that's just the way it is. Now, I would rather deal with that system than deal with Google's current system. None of us had any clue 
that YouTube was breaking the law. Very few of them even knew that this was a law. Very few people even knew that this law even existed. It's not just going to affect people in America. It's going to affect people worldwide. And as a result, nobody's going to know how to deal with this. To be safe, people are going to make more and more mature content on the internet, which kind of defeats the intent of copper in the first place. If there is no accessible means of a child to find child-friendly content without personalized ads, then this literally defeats the point. It literally defeats the point of giving a child an app in the first place so that they can be distracted if parents seriously think that this is a good idea. It literally defeats the point of YouTube even existing if all it's going to be about is drama, bad news, violence and, <laughs> and mature content. I, I seem to remember being told quite clearly by YouTube to make more child-friendly content in no uncertain terms. And now nobody can create child content because if they do so, they run the risk of never being seen again. And this is not an understatement. This is a reality. If you are marked, if your video and channels are marked child-friendly, you will not be able to be searched, your videos will not be able to be playlisted, there will be no commenting on those videos, you literally become nobody, which makes you posting up such videos to places like YouTube totally inept and pointless. There will be no means for a child to look for educational videos on YouTube, because I'll be damned. If, if kids want to learn their ABCs, don't come to YouTube. You won't find it. If you want your kids to learn how to, how to create arts and crafts, don't come to YouTube. You won't be able to find it. Financially viable. This is, you know, this is what gets me. YouTube, quite literally, is becoming less and less financially viable. And unless YouTube can provide a service for the content creators that actually use it, you know, their actual clients, there's no point in the content creators even coming here. Some content creators don't need YouTube anymore. They could quite literally say, right, I'm making my own private website, I'm not tracking your data, all the commercials there are dealt with by a secondary party, or whatever, they can survive. But smaller channels, like probably myself, for example, probably won't get that opportunity. It's a mess. Google doesn't care about its content creators. Google only cares about one thing, how much its content creators can make for it. And believe me, $170 million to a company like Google that gets over 500, of, 500 hours of video content on every minute. $170 million isn't even a piss in the pot to them. It doesn't affect them. This was merely a, a bribe to the FTC, when you think about it. A bribe to the FTC said, well, okay, here's the deal for you. We'll give you $170 million. We'll pay this off if you make our content creators responsible for our crime. We have no idea if anybody under the age of 18, uh, under the age of 13, is watching our content. We have absolutely no clue. We only have the information that Google provide us. Now, thankfully, my audience is largely over the age of 30, because that, that, you know, that, that's largely the, the, the demographic I deal with. A lot of the kids aren't interested in, you know, in, a, in the old toys or the old cartoons that, that I review. But I cannot safely risk 
marking Transformers the Movie Review or any of the cartoons that I have done as anything more than for kids anymore. I can't do that on this YouTube. So I, on, on YouTube. So I've made a decision. Instead of marking those as for kids, I'm taking those videos down. And I'll be putting them up on a private website when nobody has to be concerned about that, you know, that, that, that personalized advertising shit. And I intend to comply with copper as much as possible. If YouTube doesn't want the content that was actually successful on my website, doesn't want to have a discussion, fuck up. I, you know... We've tried, you know, we've literally tried to work with Google all the time. And every time we worked, we tried to work with Google, Google never works with us. It has never once worked with its content creators or its audience. It claims it listens, but it doesn't. It doesn't do a single thing to change what it intends to do. It doesn't do a single thing to listen to the input. It's very um, product has to offer. It just goes ahead and blindly does what it does. There's no conversation here. There's no conversation with Google. Conversation is not going to sit down with me. It's not going to sit down with anybody else and discuss the issues. It's not going to Get a lawyer to help you out, you know, with the, with the legal problems itself created. Everything that has happened here is not on the FTC's door. It's not on the content creator's door. It lies squarely at Google's door. And they screwed everyone over. They got their money. They're happy. That video I've linked in the, you know, in the crotch bar below, I hate to be that woman because she is now the face of, of Google's failure to comply with the law. Now, it's not Google that's, not just Google that's responsible for this. I'm pretty sure Facebook is doing it too. I'm pretty much sure that Bing is doing it too. I'm pretty much sure that everybody has been doing this. Everybody's ignored the law up until this point. And the FTC is to blame to a certain extent because it took so long to actually convict anybody of doing this. It was a completely useless law up until September 20th, 2019. Now, down below, I've linked the video that Google has created, I've linked the petition, and I've linked the conversation that the FTC have left open until December the 9th. Be polite. Don't be rude. Explain the issues. I pointed out that a open dialogue with the content creators and Google is probably better than the that's not the night. The aggressive press conference they gave. That that that, that press conference, you know, shooting fish in the barrel. But that's all we are. We are we're basically easy targets. Now, don't get me wrong. The FTC hasn't got the staff to literally go through go through so many videos on a daily basis. It can't go through every single video out there. It really can't. That doesn't necessarily mean that anybody is safe. It doesn't mean that. What it has put everybody on is a state of paranoia that they could be the next potential target. Now, from my understanding with some of the legal scholars that I've spoken to on YouTube, who have spoken to the FTC, the FTC are willing to listen. Whether they're willing to act is another matter. But the FTC is willing to have this conversation, which is more than Google is ever going to offer the content creators.
I only came back to Google because Blip decided it was going to sell itself to Disney and Disney decided it was not going to have anything more to do with Blip TV. That's the only reason I am here on YouTube. I, I don't like YouTube. I'll be absolutely honest with you. I think that YouTube is an evil machine. It's an evil monster. Yet it's a monster that I have had to use in order to entertain you. And the only people that can change the monopoly that YouTube has over internet videos, in the internet video service, is you. But there's so many of you out there, and so few of you will even watch this video. You make that decision. You make that decision to come here. You make that decision to watch these people on YouTube. And the content creators are to blame. People like Markiplier, people like PewDiePie, people with tremendous influence on YouTube can choose not to use the YouTube platform anymore. They can choose to use another platform. They could have made Daily Motion something really big and really competitive rather than the second rate video sharing side it is. But they chose, they chose and still do choose to remain here, thus feeding Google the very arrogance it still has and contempt it still has towards us as content creators. Change only happens if you want it to. And I'll be honest with you, as much as I, 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 lo I approve of the morality behind copper, a lot of the pressure is coming from parents that refuse to effectively parent. I don't know what else to add to this. NJ4K will continue in whatever form. Um, we will see what happens. But as, as far as using YouTube as a platform for video work anymore, after January, I can't guarantee that you're going to see the same content anymore, if any content. I will let you know what's going on and where you'll find me if, if that's what you choose to do. But other than that, YouTube is... Un, 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 unless YouTube actually acts to help its content creators and actually acts as the beneficiary it claims to be, there's absolutely no point in continuing here. I'm sorry to say it, but YouTube is not worth a $42,000 fine. That's it. I don't know what else to say. I, I'm trying my best to, to create a video off the cuff that's not panicking, that's not going over the top. But it is serious and it needs addressing. And it needs to be addressed by Google who are actually helping the very people that make its money. And the only way you're going to get Google to listen is if you affect its pocket. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. So, yeah. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Ciao.